Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, moving on to another word problem dealing with quadratics and completing the square. So we're told a goalie kicks a soccer ball where its height in meters off the ground relative to horizontal distance that the soccer ball travels in meters is modeled by this equation over here. H equals negative X squared plus eight X plus one where h is the height, x is the horizontal distance. And given that equation, we have to find what is the max height of the ball. Then part b, at what horizontal distance does either the max height occur? So that's gonna be part one. And then at what horizontal distance does the ball hit the ground? So notice that this equation here, it's a quadratic and it's given in standard form. And then in part a, they're asking what's the max height of the ball. And so they're asking for the vertex pretty much. And notice it is gonna be a maximum because the A value is negative. So we know that this quadratic is gonna be opening down. Okay, and that makes sense in terms of the word problem because when a goalie kicks a soccer ball, it's gonna go up, then it's gonna come back down. Okay, so in part A, they're asking for the vertex. More specifically, they're asking for the H value of the vertex because the vertex is gonna be a coordinate in terms of X and H, they're asking for that H value out. What is the maximum height gonna be? So in order to get that, what we can do is take this standard form quadratic and convert it to vertex form. So we can complete the square on this. So let me rewrite it over here, just this right side, so we don't have to keep writing the H over and over. So let's complete the square on this. What's the first step? We gotta take out the negative one. Remember the x squared has to be by itself and we take out the negative one from the first two terms. So we'd end up with x squared minus eight x. And then we still have the plus one at the end. Then we take the negative eight, we divide it by two and then we square it. And so that would be negative four to the power two, which would give us 16. And so then what we do is we add 16, subtract 16, and then we got the plus one still at the end. Then what we wanna do, we wanna take out that negative 16, but when you take something out of the bracket, you gotta multiply it by what's in front. So we gotta multiply it by negative one. So we'd end up with x squared minus eight x plus 16. And then over here, negative 16 times negative one will give us positive 16, and then we have positive one. So then we end up with just a quadratic in the bracket. And the reason why we do this is because this value is gonna allow this quadratic to be a perfect square trinomial. So the next line, let me actually write it over here. We're gonna end up with negative. This here, it's gonna factor into x minus four squared. Right? It's always gonna be half of that B value and then this sign is gonna be the same. And then we got 16 plus one, which would give us 17, like that. Okay, so this and this, they're both the exact same thing. If we take this and we expand it, we'd end up with that quadratic. And what's nice now is that because it's in vertex form, it's really easy to see what the vertex is. It's just gonna be four and 17 like that. And that actually answers a good amount of the questions. So part A, what is the max height of the ball? Well, it's going to be 17 meters, right? This part of the vertex. And then it actually answers also the uh, first part of part B, at what horizontal distance does the max height occur? Well, the maximum is occurring at a horizontal distance of four meters. So this here is going to be four meters. And we could actually make a graph at this point, a fairly accurate one. So notice that, let me write all of this down. So the vertex is gonna be at four and 17. Uh, you know what, let's, yeah, before drawing it. So the vertex is four and 17. Notice we could also get the y-intercept pretty easily from the standard form. That's always gonna be the C value, right? When we plug in zero for X. So notice that the initial height is gonna be one meter. Okay, so it's like the goalie had the soccer ball in their hand and it's one meter off the ground at that point and then they kick it. So we got zero and one over here as the initial height. And so with that, we can create a graph and then I'm actually gonna write out this vertex form here on the side, just because we're gonna use it for that last part. 
So that's there. So this graph here, we got the horizontal distance and then we have the height. So it's starting at a height of one. So we got zero and one, hits a vertex over here, and then it's coming back down. And then this vertex is at four and 17 like that. Okay, so they didn't ask for the initial height, but if they did, it would be zero and one. It would just be that C value for the standard form. You could also plug in zero for this X and you'd get an H of one. You'd have zero minus four, which is negative four to the power of two is 16 times negative one is negative 16, negative 16 plus 17 gives you positive one. Now what they're asking for is when does the ball hit the ground? At what horizontal distance does the ball hit the ground? So now they're asking for this, right? In the first part of part B, at what horizontal distance does the max height occur? They were asking for this X value right here of the vertex, which is just four. Now they're asking for this X value. At what horizontal distance is the ball going to hit the ground. And this here is going to be a little bit unique, the, um, the algebra. What we got to do is we got to find the intercept. So how are we going to find that? Well, notice that at this point, what is the height going to be? Well, notice that the height is just going to be zero. And so what we would plug in here is we would plug in zero for the H value. Now, one thing I want to mention is that we can't plug in zero, at least at this point in the course, we can't plug in zero for this standard form. Okay, because this here, it's not gonna factor smoothly, so we're actually gonna end up getting a decimal value. And in order to solve a quadratic equation like this, which is what we're gonna cover in the next section, we would actually have to use the quadratic formula on this, which is something we haven't covered yet in the course. And so we can't solve this. However, if it's in vertex form, then we can solve it just with algebra like I'm about to show you. Okay, so you can't plug in zero for the standard form yet, but you can solve this equation here. Because of the format it's in, you can do certain algebra. So the way that you solve it, is you can take this uh, positive 17, you could bring it over. You could also take this entire expression and bring it over and then this negative is gonna turn into positive one. It's just a little tougher to see because this is an entire expression. So I'm just gonna actually bring the 17 over. It's gonna become negative 17, right? Zero minus 17 is negative 17. Then we got negative x minus four squared. And then I gotta get rid of this negative one first before we square root it. So I'm gonna divide both sides by negative one, and I'd end up with 17 equals x minus four squared, like that. And what you wanna do now is you wanna get rid of this exponent, this two in the exponent, so we can square root both sides. What do we end up with? Now the square root and this exponent two cancel each other out. We're just left with an x minus four here. But the square root is 17, if we round it to one decimal place, that's actually gonna be 4.1. But when you square root something, there's actually two solutions, right? The square root of a positive number is gonna be plus or minus 4.1. So there's actually gonna be two solutions here. And the reason why is if we don't look at this as a word problem, just as an abstract quadratic, well, this keeps going down forever. So does this over here. So notice that if this keeps extending, there's actually another intercept over here. However, according to the word problem, we're just ignoring that part, right? Because the horizontal, the ball's going from here to there, right? There's no negative horizontal distance. But when we're solving this, we don't know that we're dealing with a word problem or this equation doesn't know that. So it's gonna give you two values. So there's going to be two cases, either positive 4.1 equals x minus 4 or negative 4.1 equals x minus 4. So when you solve for these x values, you'd either get x equals 8.1 or you get x equals negative 0.1. So you got negative 0.1 here and then you got 8.1 
over here. But then this negative 0.1, according to the word problem, it doesn't make sense, so we can just ignore that, right? We're not looking at this part of the graph. And so really, we just care about that A.1. And that ends up being the answer to that second part to part B. So at a horizontal distance of 8.1 meters, right, once the ball travels a horizontal distance of 8.1 meters, that's when it's going to hit the ground.